Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship for Sunday, the 18th of April. It's good to be with you in spirit once more, to welcome you with me in the church here. Today, I'm joined by John and Sandy and Molly, who will be taking part in the service. Harry is at the organ and Alistair is running the desk. And it's good to be here on a sunny spring morning to worship God and to welcome you into our church family. This morning, come and join us for coffee if you're able. The Zoom room will be open from 11.30 and we'll be having our normal coffee and catch up. Um, last week, we, went go we kept going for about an hour and a half. There were so many people joined in and it was a really lovely time together. So if you haven't been before, please do join us. If you don't know how, um, if you're in receipt of the weekly email, the joining instructions are on the Worship at Home sheet. But otherwise, please um, just drop me a message this morning and I will send you the link either through Facebook or Messenger or email and um, I'll, then you can join us. So we'll look forward to seeing you. Next week is the, will be the 25th of April and worship will be as usual via YouTube and Facebook. The Kirk session will meet um, uh, a week from Wednesday. That's Wednesday the 28th of April at 7.30 in the evening. And that again is via Zoom. And the Larbert East midweek service on the 29th of April, so that's a week from Thursday, is the one, the April one that I will be leading. And so I would encourage you to, do, to come and watch that. Again, that's a live stream rather than in-person worship. But hopefully um, the following week, the hope is that um, as once we get into May, the Larbert East will be open for in-person worship at their midweek services. And as soon as I've got the update on that, I'll share all the information with you to do that. Um, again, it's pre-booking as it would be if we were open as well. Our midweek reflections will continue on Facebook at noon, Tuesday and Thursday, and we'll look forward to um, not chatting together, but the check-ins and the, um, the name-calling that I put out um, all happens live on Tuesday and Thursday. My thanks to John and Sandy and Molly for joining me this morning to make our worship complete. As we prepare for worship, Let's pray. Risen God, receive our worship this day. Wherever we are, we join together to pause, to reflect, to set this time apart for you. Receive our prayers, our praise, our words, our thoughts, all that we are, all that we have, all that we give. Receive us, we pray, today and always. Our introit this morning is, as we are gathered, Jesus is here.
As our worship begins, we gather together in prayer, and Sandy will be leading us this morning. Lord our God, although we are all in our individual homes to worship you, nevertheless, we gather together in spirit to worship you, to listen to your word, to be united in this time set apart for praise and worship. Heavenly Father, you bless us with springtime. It gives us cause to lift our hearts with gladness, knowing that, as always, you are in charge of the passing seasons. Year after year, season after season, you express your constant love for us, and because of it, our faith is renewed. For many of us, your grace and mercy have filled the void that is left after so many months of restriction and isolation. Others have used the downtime to find peace in knowing you better or discovering your love for the first time. God of mercy, we know that we are always making mistakes, saying or doing the wrong thing, being selfish and insensitive. Help us to do better. We can't improve on our own. We need your great, compassionate love, deep within our hearts, so that we can't do wrong for doing right. We know that our sins have been forgiven through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, for his sacrifice it is that brings us freedom and hope. We pause and reflect for a moment on the things we are sorry for, our regrets, our anxieties, and we offer them to you for you to bring wholeness and hope to our hearts. All our prayers we offer in the words your Son taught us. So together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning, The Church is Wherever God's People Are Praising. <laughs> So, in the normal course of things, today would have been our annual stated meeting. 
Um, after the service ended, we would all have stayed in here. We'd have had a financial report, a property report. We'd have done a review of what happened in 2020. The normal course of things. You may not actually realize this, but last year we did something that many other churches did not. We actually held an annual meeting. Most have freedom, most churches have freedom to choose when it is, and it's any time between March and June. And a lot of churches were waiting to do their annual meeting in April or May, and of course they couldn't. But we had had ours already planned and we'd held it in March. So we did. A lot of other churches haven't had an annual meeting since 2019. And this is not an annual meeting, but it is a reflection on 2020 and a little forward thinking into this year and beyond. Back in March, when we had our annual meeting, just before the lockdown, before the whole world changed, 2020 was a year that had begun in hope. We started a new journey. I was your shiny new minister, and you were my shiny new congregation. I'd had almost exactly five months of exploring Larbert and visiting and attending meetings, leading worship, and generally beginning to find my way about before it all stopped. The final service in the church was Sunday the 15th of March. It was a communion service, and it really wasn't a normal service. Um, the elders who were serving communion were wearing gloves. There was hand sanitizer everywhere. We had wipes passing up and down the, the, the pews. It was, and I had been having nightmares about how we were going to do it. Because we all had now in the back of our mind that something was going to happen and things were going to have to change because this strange virus that nobody really knew an awful lot about was getting worse. My first online service was the following week, Sunday the 22nd of March. It was a very brief affair during which I read out the words of a hymn and gave a short reflection and some prayers. I think it took about 15 minutes altogether because we didn't really know what to do. And that was the first time I'd ever done anything live on Facebook. Oh, how things have changed. As lockdown progressed, so did the online presence and what we offered you. Daily reflections, weekly worship, both online and via post and email, became our new normal. This Sunday service, as we began to build it up, grew from the 15 minute short reflection to 20 minutes to half an hour to 45 minutes. Now we're back up to virtually a full hour again because we've worked out how to do things. We can offer you a virtual choir. We've worked out how to safely record people singing. So there are lots of new ways for us to do things. Lots of new ways for us to explore our faith, our relationship with God, to find new ways to worship. One of the best things that happened last year was that the list of people who received the Worship at Home sheet grew week on week. And now there are more people than ever who get to worship with us at home, but with the Labatt West church family. They read the same words that you hear me speak. They feel a new connection. And for some people, they hadn't had any of that sort of connection with church for years. I'm not going to rehearse now, blow by blow, every single thing that we did last year but I am going to give thanks for the ingenuity, 
the creativity that enabled a small team of faithful church members to work to create and share both worship at home and the weekly YouTube service and making sure that Westwards and the monthly prayer focus all continued to be shared, to be delivered in all sorts of different and innovative ways. And of course, the quiet but wonderful and essential card ministry that makes sure that people are remembered on significant anniversaries, at times of bereavement, and for special family events. This is the team, our team. These are all God's faithful people. And together we are blessed. And that blessing is shared with all who read or watch our services. At the tail end of 2020, we managed four in-person services in church. And so long as all continues the way it's going right now, we pray that before long, we'll be able to do that again. Initially, of course, there will continue to be restricted access. But we do pray that soon, very soon, we will all be together again, singing, praising God, sharing the good news, being the church. So watch this space for dates, for times when we can begin to gather together. Now, for your entertainment, here are a few of the moments that you did not see from 2020, known as the blooper reel. Encourage us. <laughs> Okay. Okay, no, that's fine. Just so I know. Right. What was I going to say? Oh, I know what I was going to say. I got them. Um, I'm sorry I'm about to laugh because the dog's just fallen off her sofa. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pause. <laughs> Stop that. <sighs> Necessarily to do with travel, although it could be. Um, going. <sighs> oh, sick. Are you ready for me? No. introduction music you did good that's all right then
would find ourselves here in our own homes. Hello and welcome to everyone joining us online, wherever you are and whatever time you watch. Oh, stop. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't want me to go back. We live. Oh, that's not right. Dottie, do not chew my blanket, please. Right, just try again. Our next hymn is 623, if you have a hymn book at home. Here in this place, new light is streaming. This is a new hymn to you all, and Moira is going to sing it. The words will be on the screen so that you can pick it up as you go. It's a wonderful hymn, and at some point when we are all back together, we'll sing it together. But right now, we'll enjoy Moira leading us. Oh, 
Now it's time for God's Word, and today our Bible reading is read by Molly. This morning's reading is from Luke chapter 24, from verse 36 to 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. Thanks be to God for his word to us today. It's time to sing again now. And our next hymn, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God.
Question, when is a ghost not a ghost? Answer, when he's flesh and blood, eating, drinking, touching, speaking, being your friend. Last week we heard about Thomas, not doubting Thomas, as John told us, but trusting Thomas. This week, we hear that the other disciples doubted too. And Jesus asked them, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Then, after eating with them, being with them, showing them that indeed it really, really was him, he gave them this charge. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in my name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. You are witnesses of all these things. And thus they began, slowly, slowly, to share the news. Jesus was alive. Jesus really was alive, and God has conquered death. And through God's action, all people now have hope. Sin will be forgiven, and life, life can change forever. Now this, of course, happened 2,000 years ago. And we are here now in 2021. We are a church that is witnessing a different sort of change. Falling numbers, a lack of ministers, too many buildings, and the anxiety that comes from knowing that change is coming. Yet we have reason to be hopeful. In the past 12 months and more, we have proved that we can go on being the church out with a building. We have shown that we can work with others, that we can find new ways of being the church. I know we have missed much too, but I have to tell you, reopening our buildings will not take us back to where we were before. If it did, I actually feel that we wouldn't have learned anything at all from this year of pandemic. There is uh, so much to be thankful for. There is so much to mourn. And there is so much more change ahead. I truly believe that God has called me here for a purpose. And I'm still trying to work that out, trying to see what lies ahead. But this I know. If you have felt a new connection to your church family in the past year, we will work hard to keep that going, to maintain it. If you have tried something new, found new ways to worship, found new ways to stay connected with loved ones. We will work hard to build on that new beginning, to keep it going. We do not know what is coming, but we do know that things are changing. The Larbert and Stenhouse Muir area cannot sustain six separate congregations in six separate buildings that it currently has. There are not the funds, the resources, the personnel to make that happen. But as long as the gospel is proclaimed and God's people are connected to each other in God's name, then there is always hope, and there will always be hope. We may be like those disciples on the beach, doubting, unsure, anxious, afraid, 
But we also know that Jesus is alive and with us every step of the way, just as he promised he would. So we can, we will look forward in faith. We can and we will trust in God's plan for we are God's people in our community and God is with us every step of the way. Amen. And if you haven't worked it out, our next hymn is Look Forward in Faith. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Living Lord, we have joined together in giving our thanks and praise for the work of our church here in Labert. We pray for your loving gui guidance as we journey further in the building of your kingdom, demonstrating the love and kindness you shown to us during your earthly ministry. You are our bread of life. Help us to be the bread of life for the people who we meet. As we give thanks for the church, we also give thanks for our minister, Julie. Julie has been able to lead us throughout this year, guiding us and encouraging us to continue our ministry. In moments of wonder and unexpected changes, our senses are disrupted by the extraordinary so that suddenly we see you standing in our midst speaking words of peace and inspiring your world to discover the possibility of the kingdom of heaven in the ordinary of the world. Help us to enjoy our moments of wonder. God, how many people Jesus met. He loved them all. He healed the sick. He told them of your love and care. Good news for all the people he met. How many people we all meet. Help us to love. Help us to be true friends. Help us to share our love of God. Good news for all the people we meet. 
We pray for our doctors and nurses, support staff who tirelessly care for those who enter their view, at times with potential harm to themselves. We pray for the scientific community as it continues to research and development in care and prevention. We pray for those who are recipients of care and notice the wide range of people whose health has been affected by being unable to receive treatment and support. Help us to recognize that while the virus has been worldwide and in its impact, we are not equal in immunization programs. Help us to notice those communities who will be the last to receive the support they need and to work towards a fair share of wealth and resource so that your risen presence reveals the kingdom in every land. Lord, in this time of uncertainty, we pray for those who are struggling through life. May they know your presence and guide them by your hand. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen, the royal family, and all those who are experiencing loss of a loved one. May they know your comforting nature. You are the Lord of all human life. Even as we meet for worship, the world goes on. People live in sadness. Children are robbed of innocence. People walk in fear on the streets. The unemployed join queues. Even as we meet for worship, the world goes on. People live their lives in joy. Children laugh play, learn. Communities are built on justice, love, and care. Students learn, people train, and jobs are found. Lord, as we meet together for worship, give us a renewed solidarity with all your people as we weep their tears and share their joy. Renew our hope and theirs. Amen. Thanks once again to everyone who's taken part in our worship today. As the worship draws to a close, we remember where our comfort comes from, who our guide and stay is as we sing our final hymn, Your Hand, O God, Has Guided. <laughs>
We have worshipped together, even though we are apart. We have listened to God's word, we have sung God's praises, and we have glimpsed the future. With our doubts alleviated and our fears subsiding, with our hope revived and our trust restored, let us go from wherever we are to wherever we're going in peace to love and to serve the risen Lord God. In the name of Christ be blessed. And whatever you do this week, wherever you go, whoever you see, stay safe, stay well, and be blessed. Amen. <laughs>